Now then, in this short video, I'm going to show you the equipment I took with me on a polar expedition training exercise I did up in the Hardangavida area in Norway. I went there for a training session for a few nights camping and Nordic skiing and pulling polks and uh, training for polar expeditions in very cold conditions. Now I went there in January, uh, early January, so it was so we've got those really quite brutal conditions and very very short days and long nights. So I chose that time because it's a pretty rough time of year to be up there and you get this experience of having very long nights and so I, I, I'd like to just run through the equipment I chose to take with me. First of all I'll show you the sleeping bag. I chose the PhD Diamere bag, the 900, the Diamere 900K, K series, K, when, when you see K on a product, a PhD product, it, it marks it up as a product that's been made with 1000 fill power down and very very lightweight fabrics so it's the lightest option you can get. I chose the Diamere because the temperatures I was expecting and equipping myself for was in the area of minus 25 to minus 30. Now I took the uh, Diamere because it is constructed with trapezoid baffles. It's a mummy bag, but it's got this trapezoid. It means you get no cold spots and the down doesn't move. You've got vertical baffles around the chest to stop the down moving and horizontal baffles all the way down. They're all trapezoid baffles. It's quite an elaborate system it really means that the down stays well in place it can't it can't migrate anywhere so it's a very good uh, system and it's particularly useful for long expeditions where you don't want anything where you really need that bag to perform for long periods we camped for a week we had several we had a, a, a week under the under canvas and at the end of the week the bag was starting to see a little bit of ice inside it just on the surface just under the surface fabric of the bag that's be that's showing you that really about a week is long enough in polar expeditions to use the bag without a VBL a vapor barrier layer more than a week in those low temperatures and you really do want a vapor barrier layer to stop moisture or vapor coming off your skin and going into the down and freezing inside the down the danger of that is of course that moisture or ice is building up in the bag and it's replacing the air spaces, the air spaces that the down had created. So you're slowly but surely reducing the insulation value of the sleeping bag. So a vapour barrier layer would be needed if I'd gone for longer than a week. I didn't take one. So I chose the Diamere. Well, the Diamere performed extremely well. When you're camping at these low temperatures, especially when you've got very long nights in wild conditions when you really have to seal, lock the tent down in wild conditions, you're invariably going to get condensation building up on the inside of the tent and it forms a sort of hoar frost, a layer of icy frost really on the inside of the tent and when you get up in the morning it sprinkles down on top of you and when, you, when your partner's up and opens the tent door, the tent's shaking and you get covered in, in sort of a light dusting of snow and so one thing I really like about the Diamere is it's, the outer fabric is waterproof fabric. It's, I term it water resistant because it's constructed with stitch lines so if it was under underwater or had real big amounts of water, if you had a hell of a lot of water on top of it, it would eventually get through the and so the waterproof treatment to the fabric on the outer there of that bag, I really find it very good and very protective. So that's the first thing I like about the Diamere. It's a mummy shaped bag, it's got a close fitting hood and found that very, very comfortable. But I'll just show you inside of it. Um, if you look inside it, it's made with, the, in, the inner is made with 10x fabric. It's a very lightweight and soft downproof fabric. Really nice, it really allows the down to um, drape around your body and really is comfortable. But if you look at the top of the bag, the collar and the hood itself, the inner of the hood, that's also made out of water resistant fabric. And that's because um, when you're asleep, your breath freezes on the, around the sides of the bag. And if you get uh, if you get the if the tent really warms up as the sun comes up, um, that can melt and go in go in through fabric ordinary fabric. So the, the the hood area is protected by using a waterproof fabric. 
And then equally, I'll, I'll just show you this, on the foot end of the bag, I've used a charcoal coloured water resistant fabric again on the inner of the sleeping bag. And that's to protect the down from dampness of your socks. If you've got into your sleeping bag and you're still wearing damp socks, and that's pretty common for us to be doing that sort of thing. So if you've got into your sleeping bag with slightly damp socks, quite often they're warm and you can't feel them being damp, but they are damp. And so to really protect that down around the foot area, we've got a waterproof end to it. So that's the diamere, performed very, very well. I was really pleased with that option of bag. If you wanted a much lighter, if you wanted to go with a lighter bag, you could look at something like the Hisbar 800. That's a similar bag, it's a box wall construction and it's, it's designed to be as light as possible but also suitable for polar expeditions as well. Again, the uh, Hisbar 800K series is made in this water resistant ultra shell and it's got water resistant panels at the foot and the hood and so on. So that's another bag you could consider. I got on very well with the Diamere. Let's have a look at the clothing I took. I, I chose, because we were going to be spending long periods in camp and very long evenings, potentially quite cold and quite uh, tricky conditions over the night period, I chose to take some very warm uh, clothing with me as well, so a very warm down jacket and I also took down trousers as well. I chose to take the Denali jacket, it's rated at minus 38, so it is an incredibly warm jacket, very protective, but it's very, very light, so I wasn't worried about the weight of this jacket, it's a really, really lightweight piece of equipment. Lou Rudd took one of these on his Antarctic crossing, solo crossing, a few years ago, he took the Denali jacket, and he really was looking to pare down the weight of all his equipment in the Polk. I found this jacket particularly good for, for chores like melting snow outside the tent when you've got your stove burning and you're outside the tent you're trying to shield from the wind it can take a long time to melt snow enough snow to fill your flask so i found the protective nature of this jacket absolutely fantastic i was really thrilled with it i also took i also chose to take some trousers the denali trousers again incredibly warm piece of equipment and really great for nasty cold conditions some people on polar trips don't take trousers they, 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 if, they're cold, if their legs are cold, they'd get into their sleeping bag. But I, I chose to take these with me because we've got very long nights, very long periods in camp. And I really enjoyed wearing them. I found them really effective. So that's the jacket I took, the Denali. Let's have a look at the mitts I took with me. I took a couple of pairs of mitts, actually. I, I took some very, first of all, I took very lightweight wool, uh, merino wool gloves to put inside my mitts and they're mainly they're not very there's not a very big insulation value and they're not windproof but uh, the gloves are very good for protecting your skin from for, from very low temperatures of metal work and so on so uh, oh I was always wearing the gloves but for really for daily use for skiing and for general use around camp I actually used a pair of Kappa mitts those are synthetic mitts filled with Primaloft and I was really amazed at how warm they are, much warmer than I really gave them credit for. So I really enjoyed those mitts. And the secret to these mitts is that they're, they're filled with prime loft, but it's edge stitched. It's just so the prime loft is only compressed around the edges and you get an awful lot of loft from that primer loft and by not quilting it, by not compressing it, you really get the maximum loft that you can gain from it. And I found them absolutely fantastic. In fact, too warm sometimes I had to take them off. I was very warm with them, but found them really, really good. They've got this waterproof fabric on the outer and the, the, the palms are made with a, a slightly heavier weight nylon, almost like a Cordura nylon. And I found them really good, really hard wearing and very comfortable with the, uh, with the, with the trek, with the ski poles. And of course, I relied on the idiot loops because I'm just the sort of person that would lose a mitt. It, it was windy on, a few, on some of the days we were skiing, really quite strong winds. And I was really glad to be able to just make sure that these mitts weren't lost at any time. So the Kappa mitts I found fantastic. I also took some synthetic filled polar mitts with me. Now these are for very low temperatures and they've, they've got a very, very long 
sleeve on them so to, to really ensure that the lower part of the arm is very warm to really make sure that as much heat as possible around the wrist and the lower arm to, to try and keep the hands as warm as possible. They're superbly, fant they're fantastic, particularly for the north, really designed for Arctic conditions where you've got high humidity and synthetic wadding is an advantage with this sort of equipment. But I didn't use them so I can't report back on how I found them on my expedition because I didn't use them but I had them and I was really pleased to have them as a backup. Now one other thing one other thing that's worth mentioning right now is I also took a lightweight jacket I took two down jackets with me I took the Denali for camp and for night times when it was really brutal conditions but I took the I took this jacket with me also this is a Minimus Minimus K series jacket and I found this fantastic, I travelled in it, I went through the airport and things with it, so I found it really good to travel in. But also I found it fantastic to use while I was skiing, while I was pulling a polk. Um, for a couple of the days when we were skiing and pulling polks, we were skiing in really arctic conditions, strong winds and violent weather really, and we had to have goggles on and cover our, our faces up and our mouths and so on. And even those conditions were pretty brutal, the, the goggles um, froze up, you got a layer of ice over the top of your goggles so it was really quite harsh conditions and the thing I found fantastic was this jacket was absolutely superb for those sorts of conditions and particularly I appreciated the hood. The hood is a very very simple snap-on hood it's removable it's just put on with studs around it around the back of the collar but I found it absolutely superb at really protecting my head and pre pre preventing it, it really really getting very low temperatures I was wearing a, uh, a, a an insulated hat um, over, over my head anyway but to have the hood as well to really be able to protect myself from cold winds strong winds cold conditions I found it fantastic and the Minimus I found a superb piece of equipment for active wear for when you're pulling the pole and you're cold it was really a superb piece of equipment we make everything to order at PhD and this jacket is actually made um, to, for my size I'm six foot and of a medium build so this jacket is a medium sized body but it's large in its length of uh, length of the body and the sleeves are actually large in length to to give it to give me really good coverage I want coverage all the way down to my hand so these sleeves are they're just perfect for my size so we can, we make um, we make to order and we can adjust the sizes to give you a really good fit so that's the minimus I really found that a very useful piece of equipment throughout the trip and throughout traveling to the expedition as well so the minimus was my second down jacket and it was really useful now let's just have a look at the other piece of equipment I took and that was um, some down socks these were for uh, use in the tent for sleeping in if necessary and for just use for wearing in the evening once you've got your boots off you don't really want to be putting your boots back on and lacing them up and so on so some really comfortable footwear is so those are the, the, the Amigas there are very warm very protective and they pack down very small and now because we were having long periods in camp I wanted footwear that would be suitable for camp really rather than putting the boots on and off all the time so I used these in and around the tent but if I needed to go off from the tent and if I needed to go off to the toilet or something like that I wanted some footwear that would be to work with these and what I got hold of was some uh, overboots that are made by Exped and they work really well actually they're a, what they are is a another proofed they're, they're just a simple fabric boot there's no insulation around them but they've got a rubber sole and the sole is so the sole is waterproof so they're very very comfortable and then the outer shell is waterproof fabric and it's taped very lightweight they, they work very very well with uh, the PhD socks so I'll just put them inside and show you how I set how the setup goes so they're they're inside so you've got you've actually got 
a PhD sock which, is got, which has a waterproof shell on it, but then over the top of it is a very protective layer. They've got, um, they've got a couple of adjustments on them. You can adjust around your leg to seal out the snow, and then you can adjust around the ankle almost just to clamp it onto the down sock and stop it moving. But it's, so there you've got almost, you've got a waterproof sh protective shell over your down socks there and I found them fantastic when I'm when I'm heading off wading through deep snow I found them very protective and they they're very very lightweight they compress down into you pack them down just simply like that come with a couple of straps so in that polar environment where there's a lot of snow blowing around and potential for a lot of snow coming into your tent I found them absolutely superb. So there we go. That's a look at the equipment I chose to take with me to, into the Hardangavida region in January. Now, if you would like to know more about equipment for polar expeditions, take a look at PhD's Gear Advisors website. It gives direct details of information of the sort of equipment that are recommended for different types of polar expeditions, whether it be the North Pole or a South Polar trip or something like a Greenlandic um, ice cap crossing. We've put together a, a set of information sheets that will give you a guidance on what sort of equipment we recommend. I'll, I'll put a link in our in, in our description below this video that will take you straight to that and take a closer look. Okay, so that's a closer look at the Polar Expedition kit I chose to take to the Hardangavida in January. Alright, cheers.